Hey everyone, this is Stephen Strong with the Cast Iron Cookware channel, where you can find information to help you better collect, restore, and use cast iron cookware. Welcome to our third installment to Cast Iron Cookware Answers, where I do my best to answer the questions from you, the viewers of Cast Iron Cookware, and I'm going to be doing that coming right up. I just want to say that this video is sponsored by the cell site where they can take care of pretty much all of your cell phone repair needs. In most cases, they can repair your cell phone or tablet for a fraction of the cost that it would take to replace it. You can also avoid the hassle that's involved with configuring a new device to the way that you like it. Most repairs can be completed and return mailed the very same day. I will also leave a link to their website Facebook page and address to their store so if you are in the area you can go by there and see them. Okay so let's get to our first question. I'm going to read these as I go. Question number one. This comes from West Shore Apostolic Church. We really enjoy your videos. Is it possible to better sync the audio? That has been an ongoing problem that I've had for quite a while. First of all I just want to say that I am sorry for the substandard video quality. It's been an ongoing issue that I've had for quite a while now, and I've been trying to deal with it without any real success until my computer just decided it just wouldn't do it anymore. When I first began uploading videos with just my cell phone, I didn't realize the equipment that you really needed to make high quality content. I sold my bass guitar to buy an upgraded camera, and then the camera in turn had more data which my computer couldn't handle, so that made it even worse. So I've been scrambling for the last three weeks or so, doing my best to come up with a way to replace my computer. I finally got back up and running with a new computer with a lot of help from a very much appreciated family member. I also had a lot of help with the computer build from the sponsor of this video, the cell site. And I just want to say I appreciate both of you so much. So I believe the sync issues are a thing of the past, thankfully. I hope that this video shows that my mouth is in sync with the video. So I'm glad that problem is behind me now. So let's go on to question number two. This question comes from Savannah V. Where have you gone? Hope all is well. If you haven't noticed, I haven't been producing videos over the last three weeks due to the computer issue. All is well, but along with the computer issues, I have also been knocked off balance a little bit by a new foe to me, diverticulitis. I had a bout with that and it's kind of really throwed me off my balance, but I'm getting back into the swing of things. The two heart attacks I had in May and now this. So I do see some major adjustments with my diet in the future. All of these are side effects of getting older. And I do want to say this, I am so thankful that I have the opportunity to keep getting older. Okay, we're going to question number three. Question number three comes from Veronica C. Burgess. She asks, do you have any carbon steel pans? And if so, how do you season them? I don't currently have any carbon steel pans, but I can say this, you pretty much season them the same way as you would cast iron. You do, however, have to make sure that you remove all excess oil before each seasoning layer process. So that's one thing that you gotta make sure you do with cast iron and also with carbon steel pans. That's the key and that's probably the, the number one mistake with seasoning cast iron altogether and carbon steel is leaving too much oil. You want to wipe it off as though it doesn't have any oil left on it. There is still oil there but it's micro thin and that's what you want, a micro thin layer. And you do multiple layers, that's where you get that good, strong, bonded seasoning. Okay, question number four comes from K.L. It says, there are apparently some controversy about using stainless steel as a sacrificial anode. It seems that different alloys can be stainless steel, some of which may cause heavy metals to precipitate in an electrolysis tank. I am unable to find a definitive answer. But until then, I recommend regular steel. The risk doesn't seem worth it. There's been a lot of discussion lately concerning using stainless steel as sacrificial anodes in electrolysis tanks. Some types of stainless steel are more prone than others to 
produce these kinds of chemicals. I suppose the number one concern that I think that is out there right now is what do you do in disposing of the water uh, once you've used it? What I have found that the amount of these chemicals in the water that I could possibly produce in my entire lifetime would not amount to the acceptable amount that can be disposed of every year. So the amount of heavy metals that's produced in this water is insignificant, even over a lifetime. Now, if you had a large scale electrolysis company, then I'm sure you would definitely have to deal with the EPA and how to get rid of the water. The amount of heavy metals that are accumulated in a personal tank, so that's really not an issue. The second issue is the vapors that come off of the process. Now, if your electrolysis tank is inside a well-ventilated area, then you don't have a problem there either. So you want to make sure you do that anyway. You don't want to be using an electrolysis tank in a small confined space because you produce gas that is explosive, not just because of the vapors that might be harmful. I believe you'd probably get an explosion before you had the other problem. So that's the main things. And I think if you are still concerned about it and you don't really want to use stainless steel, me, I've come to the point where I don't think that there's a problem and I'm not concerned with it anymore. But if you are concerned and you don't want to deal with it, you can still use regular steel. Regular steel will work fine. It just has to be cleaned more often and it won't last quite as long. But that's not a big issue. If you are concerned, use regular steel. But if you're already set up with a stainless steel tank and you're worried about it, or stainless steel anodes, don't worry about it. It's not as big an issue as you think. Also, I found a great article on the Electrolysis Tank Builders Facebook group, and I'll leave a link to that article in the description of this video. It is a good article, and I would suggest, if you have any concerns at all, to go ahead and read that. Great information there. Also, I do want to say, when it comes to building an electrolysis tank, if you need information, the Electrolysis Tank Builders Facebook group is awesome. So check them out. I'll leave a link to that below as well. Okay, question number five comes from Todd Bridges, will electrolysis remove paint? The answer is yes, electrolysis will remove paint. But me personally, I would rather not use my electrolysis tank to remove paint. The reason why most paints produced before 1978 contain lead, and you don't want to contaminate your tank with lead, then you got to dump it out and start all over again. All the scrubbing and cleaning is just not worth the, the chance. You also don't want to have any contamination of lead on your cookware. So you want to avoid that as, as at all costs. Most paints are a petroleum base, except for the lead paint, and I'm sure there's a petroleum base there, but lead is involved. That makes a lye tank to be the best candidate to remove paint. Any piece that you believe to be suspect to contain lead or lead paint, you don't want to put it in your electrolysis tank or even in your large scale lye tank because if you contaminate it, you've got to dump the whole thing. And you also contaminate the other pieces that's in the tank with it. I prefer to use a small tank to remove paint, one just large enough for the piece of cast iron. That way, if it tests positive for lead, you don't have as much to discard. So I would say this, use a lye tank, a small personal pan size lye tank to clean the uh, paint off, and once the paint is removed, go ahead and test it for lead. You can pick up a lead test kit at Lowe's or Amazon for around $10 or so, and you get two vials. You can do two tests with it. So basically about $5 or so per test. So it's two tests in a package most of the time. And I believe you can get larger packages that have five and six and even more tests in there. So cost effectiveness, if you do a lot of pieces, you can buy the larger kits and you'll, in the long run, it'll save you a few dollars. Then if it tests negative, then you're good. You know, you can go ahead and put it in your electrolysis tank then and finish it off. So I would say that would be the best way to go. But if it tests positive for lead, you want to make sure that you destroy that piece where no one could ever use it again for cooking purposes. Just remember that any piece of cast iron that you find that is covered in paint go ahead and consider it suspect for lead. That way you, you're going to be covered. Okay, let's get to question number six. Question number six comes from Holly M. 
Will a vinegar bath hurt my nickel chrome plated Griswold number no. eight chicken pan? Basically, you want to always be conservative when dealing with vinegar on cast iron cookware. I personally don't like to go over 30 minutes and I don't like to use a solution higher than 50-50, which is 50% water, 50% vinegar, and I use white vinegar. And I don't uh, leave it in there anywhere longer than 30 minutes. I personally like to do 20 minutes, take it out and scrub it down and check it out good. If it needs a little more, I'll put it back in for 20 minutes. But I don't like to go over 20 minutes or even 30 minutes tops. And uh, remember this, that vinegar is for rust removal only. Vinegar is also used for neutralizing lye, which is a different question altogether. No matter what kind of pan you have, whether it is cast iron that's not plated or even a plated piece, go ahead and go with the lye bath first. Now you can use an electrolysis tank and it will take care of the organic materials and also the rust. If you don't have an electrolysis tank, I will say the best thing for you to do, if you have a piece that has organic material on it, which is old seasoning, go ahead and put it in the lye bath, let it eat all the old seasoning off first, after you get it out of the lye bath, go ahead and scrub it down really good. And if there's any rust on the piece, then do the vinegar bath. Do the lye first and then do the vinegar. And after that, you're ready to go ahead and wash it and season it. I've also seen people use Barkeeper's Friend on the plated pieces with a lot of success. Now, the Barkeeper's Friend, I wouldn't use it on regular cast iron because even in the description of Barkeeper's Friend, it says do not use on cast iron cookware. Uh, so I personally would not want to use it on the cast iron cookware itself. I think that you may have possibility of pitting with it, but on a plated piece, Barkeeper's Friend is a friend. So you can go ahead and uh, use that on your plated pieces and it'll help it shine up. You can also use, after you get through of all the process, you can also use a magic eraser. Magic erasers are great tools. You can use them on cast iron as well. So. Vinegar will not hurt your cast iron in small doses, but I would suggest if you have seasoning, go ahead and use a lye bath first. Lye bath will take care of the organics. The vinegar will take care of the rust. If you don't have rust, then vinegar doesn't even have a purpose. Okay, question number seven, and this question comes from Track Rock. It says, set up a Patreon account and you'll have plenty of supporters. I know this is technically not a question. In some ways, it's kind of a question to me because I've been having a lot of equipment issues and trying to get this channel going. Uh, I believe Track Rock, his idea was, hey, you need to set up a Patreon account or do something so you can keep your channel going. Uh, you can become a patron of Cast Iron Cookware. And you can do that by going to Patreon, to my Cast Iron Cookware channel. You can become a patron for as little as $1 a month. When I reach specific goals, I do plan to start a rewards program that will be exclusive to patrons of cast iron cookware. Also, I just want to say if you have any questions concerning cast iron cookware, this channel, or even me, go ahead and leave them in the comments and I'll do my very best to answer them on my next cast iron cookware answers video. I hope that you've enjoyed this video and found it to be helpful. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and share. Also hit the notification bell. That way you'll be informed of new videos when they come out. And thanks again for watching cast iron cookware. I appreciate you so much.